Hi, welcome to n etv I'm Peggy Robinson. Today's guest is Natalie Higgins, and she has started a podcast called n e Talk, and I was a guest on her show the other day, and I invited her to come on mine so everyone can get to know her, and hopefully we'll get some n ears contacting her to be guests on her show. So hi, Natalie. Thank you so much, Peggy. I hope you're well. It's great to see you again. <laughs> yes, I'd just love for you to let everybody know who you are, why you're doing this, where you live. Yeah, awesome. All right, so my name is Natalie, and I currently host my own show, NDE Talk. And um, I'm in Australia. I'm sure you guys can understand by my accent. Um, and I'm just going to sort of start from the beginning and let you all know a bit about myself and kind of give you an idea of why I'm doing what I'm doing. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll start from the beginning if that's okay. Sure. Awesome. So I'm Natalie and um, I'll start from uh, my mother. So in 1991, my mom was going shopping and she had pains in her stomach and she didn't know what was going on. And so someone called an ambulance for her. And later that day, she found out she was pregnant with me. <laughs> Yeah, uh, she had no idea. No one knew I was coming. And um, yet here I am. But the story is, so my mom had to have an emergency cesarean section um, because her life was in danger. Was it all like that day? She learned she was pregnant that day and had you? (laughs) Yep, that very day, 2nd of May, 1991. (laughs) Um, Very, very awesome story, actually. And um, so I'll fast forward in my life, like, it's actually a blessing that I'm here. No one knew I was here. And and if you could put your hands together like this and and imagine a child in it, that's how small I was when I was born. So it's a blessing for me to even be here today. Um, how far along was she? Um, I actually don't know the ins Uh-oh. and outs of that. Um, <laughs> that's something that you'll find out a little bit more on further down the track as I go. Okay. Um, So I was about two years old and my parents split and me being so young, I never really knew my mom. And so it was just me, my dad and my brother growing up. And um, we got to about, I think I was 10 years old at the time. And my dad took us to the Philippines. Now I'd never traveled before in my life. So this was really, really exciting for me. And, um, we were getting all dressed up and I didn't know what was going on. And suddenly this woman is walking down the aisle and um, my dad is about to get married to someone who I've never met before. And this changed my entire life. So skip forward. Um, I'm now back in Australia. I have this stepmom, and my entire life has changed so dramatically that I, I don't know where my place is anymore. And, you know, not having known my mom and not ever knowing that I had a mom, this was also confusing to me. So a little while down, I'll go into my teen years. I'm about 14 at this point. I'm severely depressed. Um, I, I don't know where this stems from. But again, it's that feeling of not having a place in the world or knowing where I belong. And um, I found out one day I went to school and... I was told that a friend of mine had committed suicide at the age of 14. And this scared the daylights out of me. I I realized that if I continued on this spiral I'm in, that could be me. So this started a new journey for me. I ran away from home at 14, as I, I mentioned to you when we were talking the other day. I ran away from home because I was scared that I would do the same. And I, it just started me on this life journey of trying to find my place in the world, trying to find why I'm here, you know, what's the purpose of, of me in my life. And uh, yeah, I, I, got, I met the wrong people. I got into drugs and alcohol and, and the rest is a blur. But basically where I'm getting to is I've done so much research in my life to find what brings meaning and purpose to my life. And I one day came across near-death experiences. Now, when I was listening to these stories and these testimonies of them going to this place where they're just so loved and, you know, 
awe inspiring, inspiring, sorry, all encompassing love. It made me feel like that kind of feeling is available to me. So I continued on doing my research and it's changed my life incredibly. And if I can, you know, share the message of love and and hope to anyone out there and change their life, that's something that I want to do for the rest of my life. Did you ever get to meet your mom? Yes, I did. I did get to meet my mom. Um, so I did skip a little bit because I was quite nervous. Sorry. <laughs> but um, yeah, I met my mom and I was about 16 at the time. And, um, you know, she she's she's an OK person, you know, like she's free. She's free spirit. She's wild. She back in the day, she used to drink quite a bit and she did smoke. And, and that's when I mentioned I got into that sort of thing. It was because of my mom. And so, you know, it's, it's a bad it's, influence on your life. Yeah, right yeah, it's, it's why I kind of skipped that part because I was like, I don't know if I should really bring that bit up. But it happened to know. my uh, adopted daughters as well. They yeah. sought out her, their adopted mothers, which they knew they were as old enough to know. I'm not like you at birth; you hadn't met them, but they um, picked up their bad habits. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like that's how I had such a strong connection with you from the start, because I totally understand. Like I've been there. I've been in that situation. Do you know what I mean? So, so yeah, I, I didn't know if I should elaborate on that part, but there you go. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, I've ha I have my own kids. Um, let me tell you, when I was pregnant with my son and I gave birth to him at the age of 19, and on Christmas Day as well, he was born on the 25th of, of December, 2011. And that was the most incredible, incredible day of my life. I've never felt so much love when I looked at him. It was the first time that I felt love. And, and that's just something that cannot be taken away from someone. Um, and yeah, and now I have two beautiful kids and married happily and my husband is incredible and supportive and, and yeah, that's a little bit about me, but I wanted to talk to you about some experience, uh, experiences, sorry, that has happened in my life. So when I had my daughter, um, I lost quite a lot of blood. And I became anemic, you know, really weak, tired, all of that stuff, got sick a lot as a result. And I needed to find a way to, to get some healing and, and heal my body. And, and, and so I came across meditation and I would find, I don't know if you guys have heard um, Dr. Joe Dispenza. He is absolutely incredible. I would urge your viewers to look him up. He, he's changed my life. So he would teach you to change the thought patterns in your mind in order to really relax yourself and change the way you think into a new view. And so I would meditate every day, every day, every day. And I would start having these experiences. I would start having visions of things that would actually happen later on. And at the time, I didn't know. I thought that it was just, you know, a daydream, but it actually happened. So one time I had a vision, it was just my husband coming home from work and he, he had some flowers and um, he was handing them to me and he was all dirty from work. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. And he never gives me flowers, never. But this one day he gave me flowers and it was literally two days after I had that vision. And I realized, okay, something's going on here. And um yeah it, these things just kept happening and i've had dreams you know i've heard heard things in my dreams and, and they've urged me to continue on this path and going down the rabbit hole to finding out what more is there out there than this current life we're living right now and so i hope that these experiences and 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 my view of life is in a way able to help your viewers understand a bit about me and why I do what I do. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, do, do you have any questions for me at all, Peggy? <laughs> I just, I, real, I think you'll be awesome at this because when I told my story on your podcast the other day, I could feel your interest and oh. 
your compassion. And sometimes, you know, I got to be a guest for a change, and I haven't been in very much, maybe three times the last year, and I hadn't been for years, so I forgot what it was like. And you re it really do look at the other person and, and kind of gauge, can I open up? Can I be myself? Because some people are just... <laughs> <laughs> like is she ever going to shut up kind of feeling you're getting from them um, <laughs> and so you were so um genuine and open that i really wanted to help anything i could do to help promote your channel because you are given oh. that compassion to the guests that they really need when they tell these stories oh you're so beautiful peggy and you know what I saw that in myself and to all the people watching this, of course, you probably know this is all new to me. I, this is not something that I do on a daily basis. I don't record myself. I don't, you know, I'm not a reporter. I'm, I'm a mom and a wife and, and it, it wasn't enough for me to watch the near death experiences on YouTube. It was, I needed to get involved. I needed to be a part of the sharing process. I needed to, learn about you know these people like yourself and your experiences and feel that closeness to god if you will and yeah like i mean i i just love this i love this so much from the bottom of my heart it's a blessing to be able to share these stories it really is that's um, why so i started you. mine i'm sorry go ahead no no, no you go you oh go. just that's why i started mine too you know yeah. we, we've been chatting the last few days and that's why I started mine because I watched NDEs on YouTube a lot. I fall asleep listening to them. And then yeah. I just realized I wanted to do that because I <laughs> wanted to taste it. You know, I wanted to ask the question. Exactly. I like the gesture. Yes, I wanted to taste it. Yeah. <laughs> I've been watching your channel so much now as well, especially since I reached out to you. And our friendship, what's going on right now is is something to cherish. Like I really, really appreciate the time you've been giving me, you know, the, the messages, just the heartfelt conversations. Like you're such a blessing, Peggy. I really do appreciate it. And the help and just, yeah, you're amazing. You really are. I love your story. I love your personality. I love your past and, and to be able to understand you and, yeah, just you're such a beautiful person. I just see <laughs> and you the future. Me. Yeah, yeah, I see I see your future. And you have oh. a future in this. You really, really do. And, and it's, it's funny, it's funny because I'm I'm really not you know, I can talk, but I'm not as outgoing as as I seem to be right now. So right now, you could probably tell I'm so nervous, but I'm so passionate about this and I'm so eager to get out there that this for me right now is like stepping out of my comfort zone and just like getting into it. Well, I love fresh babes, you know, <laughs> I get a lot of older people on here and it's not even the older, maybe they even never told it before, but a lot of people I get, um, and not to criticize anybody, but you know, if you've done this for over a year, and, um, I've had like almost 200 guests and, you know, I remember starting and feeling just like you did, not knowing what I was doing, not knowing if I could do this and not yeah. knowing if I'd be any good at it, but just having that in your heart, you've got to do it. Um, but a lot yeah. of the people have told their story hundreds of times, if not a thousand times. And so, you know, and, and so you're just a breath of fresh air. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I feel the same about you. Like, you're just amazing. I hope to be like you one day and, yeah, just to be a part of the sharing process is all I really want to do. So yeah. you're like this little tiny it on. <laughs> when I get all these old chickens running around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and and I don't think there is any Australian podcasters on the topic of near death experiences because I haven't found any yet. Have you heard of Christy Where's Salisbury? Who was that? Sorry, Christy Salisbury. No, I'll, I'll send you a link. I'll yeah, yeah, link do that. Yeah. Yeah. And to your viewers as well. I mean, feel free to come and check me out and have a look at my channel. And if you'd like to come on my show and you'd like me to share your story, I hope that's okay, Peggy. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm kind uh, of I mean, fade yeah. out, you know, like I had my, I had my day and I'm just kind of like, okay, I did that, been there, done that. And I'm kind of, 
Um, we're getting ready to get our grandchildren. I'll be getting custody of our little grandchildren. Yeah. And so I really want to, you know, step back and put my focus there. Yeah. Oh, you're so beautiful. And congratulations with it all. I really hope it all works out for you. I know it will. And you're going to be such an amazing mom to them. And yeah, I look forward to hearing from you with that and seeing how it all goes. And Yeah, and yeah. I had talked to, I had talked about them before, kind of worries I have for them. Yeah. Well, parent, my youngest adopted son, him and his wife, they got on meth. And Yeah. we're just one of many grandparents that will be raising their grandchildren because their child got on drugs. Yeah, And and look, um, we're, we're all going through life struggles, right? You know, like even us people as TV show hosts, you know, we're not perfect. We have things going on in our lives as well that enable us to want to share with you even more. Like, hey, we, we understand you. We understand what you're going through. So, yeah, it's great Yeah. And to hear. and he's talking about these visions. I mean, keep it's good that as long as Yeah. you are, you know, that you recognize those because, you know, I, I spent a lot of my years pushing that stuff away and not realizing this stuff's real. And I've come to um, promise myself I would not do that again. Um, because sometimes lives are stake here at stake when we have these visions. And with my grandchildren, it was about a month ago. And we stopped to see him and um, the kids come to the door. Mom wouldn't come to the door. And um, the, the little boy was standing there, you know, he wanted to go with this so bad. And mommy said no. And so he'd go talk to her and come back to the door. It was just opened up this much. And then as we're leaving, we see my little granddaughter, she had a little face pressed to the window, looking at us, just big sad. She, cause we, they went with us every weekend, you know. And, 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 you know, months at a time and we've had them, we've been there since I used to take their mommy to, you know, doctor's appointments when she was pregnant for her. I mean, I was the first skin to skin with Zoe and she was like, Oh, you, she was just this tiny, she was only two pounds when she was born and, you know, we've been there. And so they cut us out of their life because, um, we reported children's services again. And so we didn't get to see them all summer. And so a month ago, we stopped trying to see him again, and, you know, we weren't allowed. And so we went up the hill, turned around, was headed back down the hill, and I told my husband to stop the truck. And we're sitting there in the truck, and I could see this vision as clear as day. I saw my grandkids coming out of that door of the house, which they'd never done before, and went, walked down that street and was the inter, at the intersection in front of McDonald's. I saw it happening and I was so scared they would get hurt. Like I didn't know when this was going to happen. I knew this was going to happen. And so three weeks went by and we got a letter in the mail and it said the children were removed on this date and, um, you know, three weeks prior, nobody told us. Yeah. And would we, you know, take custody? And I was like, And I didn't know why, because they couldn't tell us why the kids were removed. So I went and talked to the mother, and guess what happened? They had She was passed out on drugs in the bedroom. The kids opened the door, went down the street, and was in the int
he he started really, really, really walking up to me quite fast. And I had this feeling and I remember this feeling washed over me. And I was just, I was in primary school at the time. I think I was in year, uh, year five, year six. Yeah. Um, and I remember having this feeling washed over me of just sheer terror. And I turned around and this man is gaining on me. And then I looked the other way and my friend's mom is pulling over in a car and telling me to get in. And I'm like, that's the first time I had the type of experience which led me to believe that you need to listen to that feeling. You need to really get in tune with your intuition and that gut instinct because it's real. You know, I believe those are not just our gut instinct because I used to say the same thing. But today I believe those are our guardian angels. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, you know, speaking with you and hearing these people's stories, I look back on my life and I think there's so many times in my life where things could have went the opposite direction and it didn't because of the voice in my head. You know, I had my best friend. We grew up together. And when I ran away, she ran away with me. When I snuck out, she snuck out with me. And, you know, we grew up together. We we were like this, you know, and she turned to drugs and I didn't. And the reason I didn't is because I just felt like there's something about this that doesn't sit right with me. It's not meant for me. And I listened to my gut and, and to this day, I love her very much, but she, you know, she doesn't live the most amazing life and, and, and look at me today, like I'm her best friend and I'm, I'm living a great life. And you know, what could have been and what is makes you think, just listen, just listen to that gut feeling. Yeah. 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 It's life-saving. Yeah. I remember that moment too, of decision like that. Uh, I mean, I had been, I was a teenager and I'd been smoking pot and I'd been drinking and I smoked cigarettes and I really didn't care about anything. I was doing what I wanted, but I was walking alone through a field down by the fair one night and a group of girls I didn't even know walked up to me and asked if I wanted to do, and I don't remember if it was heroin, but it was some hard drug like that. Mm. And I said, no. And they was like, oh yeah, yeah, come on, this is where I'm fine. Like, no way. And see, and I'll, and, and sorry to cut you off, but like, do you know when they're like, oh, come on, come on. And you're still like, no, no. And, and there's still that, that feeling of like, you need to do it. You've got to keep pushing and you've got to keep going. No, because that's, what's driving you to understand that this is not for you. Listen, it's like, yeah. like I knew that that was, that would be crossing a huge line. That yeah. was ruining my life. Yeah. And I'm not stepping into that. And I look back, you know, off and on, it's like, I'm so glad that as dumb a kid as I thought I was, I was smart enough to not do that. And when I got pregnant at 18, I had my first one at 19, like you, but yeah. at pregnant at 18. And I just got, you know, just graduated high school. I had my own job. I was living on my own and um, finally could do whatever I wanted and pregnant. Yeah, 18, you know, and I was like, okay, I'm quitting all this stuff. And my ex and I both, you know, um, no more smoking. He continued drinking, but you know, I stopped of course the drinking, but I stopped the pot. And then after I gave birth, I'm like, I'm not going back to those things either. And he didn't go back to the pot either, which was a lot of our dating was smoking pot. I mean, we yeah, were we've all been our pot. We were dating. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I mean, the first time I started having feelings for him, he'd been asking me out for a long time, was sitting on a couch watching TV, eating a bag of Doritos and passing a joint. <laughs> that was like, I love this guy. You know, I can yeah. see my, my rest of my life with this guy doing this. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I've been there too. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> and and we, we just like, you know, this is too important to bring a life in the world. It's just so important. And and just like, you know, us, you know, turning down drugs as teenagers, our lives was too important yeah. to take that road. Yeah. And, and it brings me back to there's got to be a purpose and there's some people who get it and you know some who don't unfortunately and and today I'm still you know trying to find that purpose but I think I may have found it 
Oddly enough, I, I honestly, I just got the goosebumps. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think that's a sign in itself. But I feel like my purpose is to, as I said, I didn't have that love growing up. I didn't feel that acceptance or nurturing feeling. Um, and, and now that I understand what that feeling is, I want to share it. And so every day, you know, if you're going to the shops or, you know, doing errands, whatever it is that you do in your day, instead of looking down at the ground and being in your mind, look up and look at someone, whoever's there and just smile because you never know one smile can change someone's entire life. So yeah. I, I believe in that. I believe in all of that good stuff. <laughs> yeah. And, and the negative too. I mean, even re reading negative comments affects me. Yeah. I feel like I'm carrying that negative energy around me. I mean, you can delete it and you can block a, a someone from watching your channel, but you still, I mean, I'll carry that negative around. And then, yeah. like you say, go into the store and see a smile. I was like, oh, there it is again. Yeah. There's yeah. the angel glow that I missed. Yeah. Get rid of these horns I'm carrying around. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's just a stench that you want to get rid of. I just, I can't stand that negative vibe. Sometimes it's okay to be down. You know, not everyone's perfect. I'm not perfect. I have bad days. But yeah, like just feeling positive is so important it, it really is so and it yeah. sounds to me like from the moment you were born you know and being born so small and then missing your mom you knew something was missing you didn't know what it was yeah and then for that friend at 14 to commit suicide and have such an effect on you like to know that's where i'm gonna go that's where i'm headed yeah and so oh, you know, we have so many choices yeah. throughout our lives and it takes getting older and mature to look back and that's what i kept you know being amazed when we we're chatting on facebook is that how far beyond your years you are you're only 31 and yeah and you look 21 <laughs> and how far you know and, and look and, at you how old are you 61 Peggy? I'm 61 <laughs> you do not look that age girl we have something in common <laughs> have kids young and you, yeah. you just yeah i don't know what it is get it done early and live later <laughs> yeah yeah but yeah 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 so I, I just wish you all the luck and i can just see beautiful things in your future doing this and all the lives you're going to touch. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I really do. Okay. And thank you to all the, all of you watching. I hope you like what I've had to share. Um, hopefully I get better as I go along. But just know that I really do love doing what I'm doing. And if you'd love to share your story with me, uh, get in touch. And yeah, let's get sharing. <laughs> I, I don't think that you need to get better. I think you need to stay right where you are because you're there. Oh, thank you. You're thank there, you. girl. You're there. <laughs> wow. That's all. You're ready. Awesome. You're ready to go off and running. Yeah. <laughs> I pass the torch to you. <laughs> <laughs> I take it. Thank you. I'll take over. No, no, no. Uh, I'm not going to take over. No, no, no. Take no. over. Take over, girl. You take it. <laughs> Run. Don't look back. So blessed. So um, blessed to have met you, Peggy. Do you want to tell people how to get in touch with you? I'll put it in description too, but. Yeah. So um, my channel is NDE Talk. Um, if you want to reach out to me, go through email if you'd like at ndetalk at gmail.com. Um, or I also do have NDE Talk on Facebook. It's a group. You can join there and contact me through there on Messenger. I respond because I'm always on my phone. <laughs> Um, yeah, and um, I'm sure Peggy will link it all below, but um, yeah, I, I hope to hear from you all. I'd love to share your stories and I look forward to hearing from you guys. And my advice to you, any negative comments, just delete. Don't give them a second. Yeah, I might get my husband to read the comments before me and he can weed out the ones that I don't get to. There them. you go. That's a good thing to do. Have somebody else do it. So you don't have to take that energy on because yeah, it's ugly. Exactly. Yeah. And, and you want your channel to be beautiful. You want the, where people can feel good to come. Yeah. And, and you have to have that good energy to project out on your podcast and, and it can, it can drag you down. Yeah. Oh, we don't need those voices in our head. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I know. Oh, man, I don't need that energy. I'm all about positive energy. Be nice. Be kind. <laughs> Please. <laughs> okay. Awesome.
Thank you, Natalie. No we'll worries. Talk to you later. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you. Uh -huh. Talk to you soon. <laughs> yeah. Bye. -bye.